If you want to get your first earnings or just earn more consistently, then this is the video for you. I recently earned in the solo cash cup. Let's go, baby! So I'll mostly be focusing on that, as this is the easiest to earn in, but I'll also very briefly go over duo cash cups and solo zero builds. Now first and foremost, you need to find a drop spot you feel comfortable landing at and figure out where you have to drop for all different kinds of bus paths. A lot of the time, whoever has the better drop gets a huge advantage and often wins the fight. People were using this drop map for the top chest of Grim last season to get the best possible drops, so if you can get your hands on something like this, then definitely do it. On the really far drops, you need to be looking super high in the sky right before that point where your camera angle changes. Always have a backup plan in case you get out dropped, because in finals you only get 3 chances to win a game and you don't want to waste any to off spawn deaths. I recommend going on fortnite.gg which shows you all the loot in every part of the map. When you're contested, and you will be at times, you need to end the fight quickly. Dragging out off spawn fights makes you so scuffed and leaves you vulnerable to third parties. I understand that no one wants to die off spawn, and I'm not telling you to just jump in right away, but you need to make the decision early on whether you're going to disengage or try and end that fight quickly. Now if you aren't contested, you need to learn the most efficient loot route possible for your spot, which includes the fastest route throughout the loot and what is worth your time to farm and what isn't. In this season, you need to have nitro splashes. I don't care what strategies you guys have come up with, those strats need to include you carrying 6 nitro splashes because there's no other mobility unless you have the medallion, in which case you can just carry another heal. In terms of loadout, I highly recommend carrying a stack of floppers. If we take a look at this game I was in, you can see I get sent into zone from the nitro fists and I'm able to live and pop medkits because I had some floppers in my inventory. Now I know nitro fists aren't in the game anymore, but take a look at all the medkits that are sitting back here on low ground. In every game you play, there's gonna be another white heal somewhere in storm that you can play and the floppers allow you to move around and go look for them but if you don't need to use them right away then don't because they also allow you to out heal storm sickness nice. in case you're wondering what storm sickness is it's a mechanic that fortnite added to prevent infinitely healing in storm uh, after you take 500 right? damage from storm you get the warning for it and after 600 damage taken from storm it becomes yeah, active what? once active you start Let's taking 30 go. damage per second instead of the normal 10. if you're interested in playing for the forecast towers every game here is a graphic that shows the probability at which different locations will spawn. You need to prioritize metal early as there are no more caches to give you 200 metal. And as you get further into the game, it becomes more difficult to farm metal. If you get your loot early enough, you can usually rotate into a small spot that only has a few chests but is dense in metal such as gas stations. In case you didn't know, six of these bunkers spawn every game, but they don't open until third zone, but you can tell which bunkers are going to open if they have all these crates that spawn around them. If you want to claim these bunkers, you really have two options. You can either invest in making a huge 3x3 box around the bunkers so players are discouraged from pushing you, or you can break all the crates around it so when viewed from afar, other players think it didn't spawn. Personally, I would only do the crate strategy if you don't have the mats to build around the bunker. The six bunkers that spawn are able to be seen on the map five seconds after third zone pops and you're able to enter the bunkers 35 seconds after third zone pops. If you farm every piece of metal inside the bunker, excluding the weapon crates and chests, you will get roughly 230 metal every time. Now loot wise, the island doesn't offer much besides a mythic hand cannon and a few chests. However, it can be really useful if you need wood or brick as the outer portion will get you 500 of each very quickly. Something that not a lot of players do is utilizing the island for its mod bench. Most players that are near island either play for a rift or want the loot from the flag. And I know it may seem greedy, but but those extra attachments are very useful and you should really play for any advantage you can since at the end of the day you need to win the game. If you land anywhere near the top left of the map that has the water which gives 3 dashes, you can save those for as long as you need to. Although they aren't nearly as important as last season, they are really useful to fight with if you get keyed or even if you need to make a close rotate and don't want to invest a nitro splash. If you have all the loot you need by mid game, then get to a good spot in zone either somewhat center or dead side and either box up somewhere you can refarm or chill in a bush slash a good camping spot. Be patient and wait for the next zones. Now once you make it to 6th zone, if you don't pull you want to make sure you aren't the last person to rotate or you're going to get held by players already set up in zone in front of you. This game is all about timing, so there's no one correct way to make a rotate every time, but what I like to do is follow someone else who is making a similar rotate as me, which usually gets me in pretty safely. Don't be that guy that shoots the person who's rotating in front of you on these 6th and 7th zones, because that scuffs your rotate and quite literally does nothing for you. So many people shoot other players for absolutely no reason, and all it does is make the enemy want to hold you. Also, don't try and make the entire rotate into zone if you have to force it. I don't see enough players pause when they need to pause, which results in them getting held by the lot. Another thing I see a lot of is players not building until they're in zone, which in my opinion is just greedy. Mat conservation is important, but don't throw away your game because you didn't want to place a couple more builds to protect you while running into zone. I 
cannot stress enough how important it is to not get caught up back zone. This season is a pretty low mobility meta, so even more players get caught on backside. This is where a lot of the really dumb plays often take place, so definitely avoid this when possible. A personal preference of mine, which seems to really work, is to avoid boxing on edge zone in these 6th and 7th zones, because it makes the next rotate very difficult if it pulls max. A really good tactic I don't see a lot of players do is to pause on old builds. Since moving zones take a while to actually open up, you can rotate to some old builds, pause, and wait for the new zone to emerge, then complete the rotate without having to waste mats boxing up twice. Another cheeky tactic is to put yourself in a cone. Similar to the previous tip, you save a ton of mats, but this time you don't have to rely on finding old builds. However, I do want to say this does involve slightly more risk, but is very beneficial if you can consistently pull it off. Now, layer changing is crucial if you want to minimize the amount of damage you take in an endgame. If you you gotta make a far rotate, don't do so on the same layer the whole time, even if you want to end up on the same layer you started on. If you guys are stacked on loot, you need to play higher layers where there's less chaos going on, and when you need a refresh you can then drop down and play lower layers where it'll be easier to get that refresh. Please, please, please get in the habit of checking on height. If they're fighting, you can build up away from them towards where zone is pulling to, and then spray it out and take height from there. Whenever you're on height or going for it, don't grief your game for it. I'm not saying to give it up immediately when someone chows you for it, but if you don't have the mats to keep height, or if you're trying to take height and the player is obviously stacked, just give it up. When you need a refresh, it's much easier to get one when you make two boxes and use that space to try and get one. A common mistake I see newer players make is going for refreshes too late. As the end game progresses, players are going to have less and less mats, so instead of waiting until you're down to a few builds, try and look for a refresh around first or second moving, because if you can be 5-5-5 at that point in the game, you won't need another refresh for the entire game, as long as you mat conserve properly. Throughout the entirety of end game, you need to avoid all storm damage if possible, because just like last season, these games go down to heal off, and storm sickness is what most players die to. When healing off, make sure you don't start popping medkits on 90 HP, or you'll reach 100 HP before the 10 seconds are up and you can't fully use the medkit. The goal with heal off is to stay in the safe zone until that final zone fully closes, but this isn't always possible. If you need to drop back into storm early, try and keep eyes on which player stays in the safe zone the longest, and track where they go to pop medkits. This way, once you're out of heals or about to get storm sickness, you can force a fight to try and win the game. While you're popping medkits, you should also be thinking about what heals there are around the map, whether that be campfires, cacti, slurp barrels, vending machines, and even noms boxes. 95% of the time, those noms boxes go unlooted, which can help you live a couple seconds longer. Okay, those were the best tips I have for solos, and all that information is what's helped me to win 8 solo victory cup games, and I hope it helps you guys too. Now I have a few tips for a couple other game modes, which even if you don't play them, some of the same concepts still apply for solos, so definitely stay tuned. Now starting with duo cash cups, these are the hardest to earn in, but it's possible. You need to take advantage of when you're in bad elo, because getting kills is super important. If we take a look at last cash cup, the qualifying team with the lowest kills had only 50, however they played super consistent, and this playstyle is very difficult to replicate as all these games except the first one were played in high elo. Because this format requires a lot of kills, a great way to get some is to master a semi-contested drop spot. All spawn fights are much better than mid game because they aren't dragged out as long and they can't scuff you as hard. Plus if you die you haven't wasted as much time compared to dying mid game. Wiping a team or two off spawn every game is a great way to get those extra much needed kill points. If your goal is to make end game and you aren't keying, you need to be playing dead side throughout the entirety of the mid game and dead side of zone is usually the direction in which zone pulls. So, if the zones keep pulling northeast, dead side is going to be that northeast side of the zone. What this does is allows you to be away from all of the chaos that occurs on the congested side of zone, and you can often farm max materials and get some better loot. This is a game from a duo cash cup on EU, and notice where the entire lobby is. They're all either on the top or left side of zone, because this zone pulls to Mount Olympus and there's absolutely no one down there. At least one of you guys should be carrying Fizz, because in solos it only gives you 100 shield, but in duos it provides you 200 total shield. And only one of you has to pop it while the other player can hold your walls if you're getting sprayed. The movement aspect is also nice if you don't have nitro splashes. A common mistake I see a lot of duos make is that they don't go for refreshes together. With the current spray weapons in the game, having two players to shoot out a wall or floor breaks the build super fast and you can often get the refresh you need in doing so. Get in the habit of looking up for height literally every single moving zone, cause there's a good chance it may be pretty free. This is probably the most important tip for duos, especially now that there aren't any fists in the game. High ground is a much more attainable and sustainable option. Even if there is a team on it, you can spray out their builds and just check to see how stacked they are. Shambles teams will often only be on wood or will only tarp out on one build at a time. 
Okay, now I know zero builds isn't for everyone, and I even hated it when it first came out, but these victory cups make it possible for quite literally anyone to earn. I've made $800 from something I thought I'd never play, and what I can tell you guys is that you have to alpha up loot early on in the game. Do not try and land shambles, because you need to get bunkers early on, and honestly, you really do need four bunkers. I've seen people win with two bunkers, and on super rare cases, no bunkers, but guys, it makes winning extremely difficult if you don't have four. Now, we can't all get lucky off spawn and find four bunkers, so what I normally do is push into a big POI near me and then I either lurk on a player that's still there or I loot the floor spawns that haven't been touched yet. If after all this you still don't have four bunkers, I'd recommend playing to loot the actual bunkers that spawn third zone and don't be afraid to tank some zone in order to get these. Now the next tip I have may be controversial to a lot of you, but everyone that I've VOD reviewed that won two games has carried two guns, the Gatekeeper shotgun and the Burst SMG. It's super popular nowadays to only carry a shotgun, but in my opinion, even if you go into endgame with six shotguns, waves, fizz, four bunkers, four bubbles, it's still honestly pretty hard to win the game with only one gun. Solo zero builds is so unpredictable, so you honestly just need to get kills. The burst SMG is great for spraying bunkers out or just at people because its DPS is so high, and the gatekeeper shotgun is much better than the combat or pump when you're up close with your opponent. Having a spray weapon also makes getting kills throughout every zone way easier, as well as mid game rotates easier when you have the weapon to clear bushes from afar. And finally, the last zero build tip I have is to always be aware of the terrain you're on. This map does have a lot of hills and elevation changes, and if you aren't aware of them, they'll most likely end up griefing your game. I unfortunately made this mistake once this season, and it gave the one person who was aware of the elevation change and planned for it a free win. What I recommend is if you know you're in a hilly area, save one or two shockwaves as long as you possibly can, because most players in endgame aren't really aware of these elevation changes. If you don't have some type of mobility at the start of endgame, and you recognize you're in a hilly area, I would go for a refresh very soon when players have more loot, rather rather than later when people have used up all of their utility. I also want to mention a few things you guys can do to better prepare for these tournaments as we're currently on a bit of a break with the next one being on July 15th. Starting with your mechanics, I recommend going into your own creative map and getting comfortable building and pretending rotating with the nitro effect. You don't want to get chunked while rotating in endgame, so get used to the movement and how to build when you're off that speed boost effect. I also recommend watching players who have already had success this season, so to do so, just go into the compete tab and load up a game that someone won and see what they did right. And also what they did wrong. I personally tend to watch the people who won two games but without that many kills because this normally means they just played full endgame and weren't some WP guru. After doing this, go rewatch your own games and analyze it in the same way you would watching anybody else and try to remove your own bias when doing so. You'll honestly probably find a lot of mistakes in your own gameplay so I'd write down every single little thing you did wrong that way you can always revisit it and you won't forget. And finally tip 50 is to be confident. This may seem like a cop out tip but I know for a fact a lot of you guys get nervous while fighting in these cups because you want to do well. But just remember that at the end of the day, there's always going to be some more cups to play, and if you lose a fight, you go next. Eliminating that pressure is so important because you really do play so much worse when you aren't confident and when you let the nerves get to you. If someone pushes you, you don't want to panic and get nervous and die. I would recommend either playing money scrims that run on your region, or even giving yourself challenges and solo rank, like every time you lose a fight, you have to do 10 push-ups. It doesn't have to be that specifically, that's just an example, but anything to put some pressure on yourself in order to get used to it, that way when tournaments roll around, you'll be a lot less nervous. If you made it this far into the video, let me know which tip you guys found most helpful and drop a like or sub if this helped you in any way. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!